All right, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, one of the world leaders now praising the Iranian protesters who are challenging the rule of their country's hardline regime. Meanwhile, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un with another warning for the United States today as part of his New Year's address to the people. What a warm and lovely message he had, saying he always has a nuclear button on his desk and once again claiming the rogue regime has missiles capable of striking anywhere in the United States. Former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. John Bolton saying, well, we've heard this before. It's uh, propaganda from Kim Jong-un. This is his regular New Year's speech. And uh, obviously he has seen the conversation in the United States that looks at a possible preemptive military force, not, not as the most attractive option, but as an option that we definitely have to use uh, if they don't give up their nuclear weapons program. So we need a very careful calibration exactly what the North's capabilities are. Rich Edson back from the warmth of the winter White House and travels with the president back in D.C. Uh, with more. The president was uh, asked last night, talked a little bit last night about North Korea. Uh, he did talk about it, uh, responding, Leland, to what we heard from the New Year's Day address from Kim Jong-un, which was essentially threats against the United States, though, an offer to calm the tension on the Korean Peninsula. In that address, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un bragged about his regime's nuclear and ballistic missile development. He says, quote, the entire United States is within range of our nuclear weapons. A nuclear button is always on my desk. This is not reality not a threat. This year, we should focus on mass producing nuclear warheads and ballistic missiles for operational deployment. These weapons will be used only if our society is threatened. Though the leader who regularly launches ballistic missiles over Japan says North and South Korea should calm the situation there. He says, quote, when it comes to North-South relations, we should lower the military tensions on the Korean Peninsula to create a peaceful environment. Both the North and the South should make efforts. He even says North and South Korea should meet to discuss North Korea sending athletes to the Olympics in South Korea next month. President Trump, in response to all this, says, we'll see. His administration says it continues pressing other countries to cut off North Korea. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says the U.S. and North Korea would begin discussions only when Kim changes his behavior, Leland. Yeah, some discussion that Olive Branch, the South, may be trying to sort of drive a wedge between the United States and South Korea. That's in one side of the world. The other side of the world, we have these Iranian protests turning deadly. Uh, President Trump responding to them very differently than his predecessor, right? Uh, that's what his administration is contending. It will be different, though uh, it remains to see what exactly this administration is going to do. As Iran's president is now saying, they have the right to protest, though the demonstrators, as he said, should not make the public feel concerned about their lives and security. Iranian state media report more than 10 are dead, and that was there was an attempt to seize military and police installations. Meanwhile, world leaders are weighing in on what's going on in Iran, in particular Iran's enemies, like Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel. Brave Iranians are pouring into the streets. They seek freedom. They seek justice. They seek the basic liberties that have been denied to them for decades. Iran's cruel regime wastes tens of billions of dollars spreading hate. This money could have built schools and hospitals. No wonder mothers and fathers are marching in the streets. The regime is terrified of them, of their own people. Thousands are protesting a poor economy while Iran engages in costly proxy wars across the Middle East. These are the largest protests in Iran since 2009. Yeah, since, the, since the Green Revolution. Important question, though. We discussed this a little bit yesterday. We've heard from President Trump on Twitter a number of times supporting these Iranian protesters, saying the world is watching. We just heard from the vice president also saying that we can't let these protesters down, saying the United States in some way, yet to be determined, is going to stand up for these protesters. What about the reaction from Europe? So often it's the Europeans who can't wait to jump out uh, in front of any kind of uh, human rights violations. You've got people being killed in the streets of Iran. Anything from the Brits, the Germans, the French, the Italians? Well, the criticism that we've heard from so many uh, in the United States about the Europeans is that they have increased their business with Iran as a result of the Iran nuclear deal, and they have been 
more hesitant to, to criticize the Iran regime as a result of that. Uh, as the United States moves forward and it says that it's now no longer certifying that Iran is complying with the Iran nuclear agreement, the Europeans have very much wanted the United States to mm. stay in that Iran nuclear deal as part of uh, the increased business that they've had there, though uh, also the Europeans point out if the United States gets out of the Iran nuclear deal, the problem mm. there is then they've gotten the upfront benefits, the Iranian regime. Uh, however, the uh, United States, by reimposing sanctions, uh, you know, a lot of that money is already gone and gone to the Iran regime. Yeah, and and and, and as President uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu pointed out, we know where uh, at least a lot of that money uh, was spent by the Iranian government. Rich Edson, Washington D.C. More on this uh, as it happens, certainly at the State Department this week. Thanks, Rich.